King and Omega, chapter 138. In this chapter, we see the aftermath of the battle between Purgatory and the King and Association. Alma won the last battle against Rollon, which I was really happy for. I was very much expecting some sort of lukewarm draw with some shenanigans in the middle or the tournament to get interrupted by the worm. And we actually got a decisive clean victory. Not, not a clean victory per se throughout the whole tournament, but a clean victory for the final battle, which I very much appreciated. I did enjoy that Alma was powered up in terms of technique, but nerfed in terms of the BS power that is the Awakening. I very much prefer when this manga keeps it up with the martial arts and really downplays the power-ups. That's just my personal preference, even though I do realize that the series is very unrealistic in a lot of ways. I think that the way the author draws the choreography and the techniques is very nice and the fights are more strategically appealing when they focus more on the martial arts side of things. I especially like that Roland was just this all-arounder kind of guy, sort of a more powerful version of Okubo, he used a lot of elbows, I like that he had this like invisible elbow or whatever where it's just an elbow between your guard, which is something that happens in real MMA fights. And also he used the fearsome 12 to 6 elbow, which is banned in actual MMA fights. So I don't know if that was a bit of a meme or a reference or something, but I really appreciated that as well. I would have liked, however, for the final strike to be a little bit more set up. Since this battle focused a lot more on choreography and didn't abuse the advance as much, I would have liked for Alma to maybe set up that punch throughout the whole fight and maybe land it at the end instead of just having a flashback to getting its timing right and during training. I would have appreciated a little bit more of setup, but overall, to me at least, the final blow was pretty satisfying. After the fight, Alma's trying to go fight again and everybody's just, you know, calm down buddy, you died once, the, the audience isn't going to have that again. And then we see that Ryuki comes back and he's pretty much brainwashed, he said that he found God, which is very worrying, taking into consideration he talked with Kiryu, which is one of the most psychopathic characters of the original series, so maybe we will keep seeing these crazy characters. I do think that one of the weaknesses in the writing for Kang and Omega is that a lot of the characters' gimmick is being crazy, there's a lot of crazy characters, so I think that maybe if they take Ryuki in a different direction, it would be better than to just put him as another guy that went crazy. We will see in which direction they'll take it in, and saying he found God after talking with Kiryu can mean a lot of things. I just hope that they don't take it in the generic crazy guy category, because even in this tournament we had a lot of those already. At the end, Nogi seems to be politicking his way into influence and power, so he's shown to be very resourceful. I do feel that the non-disbanding of Purgatory is kind of a cop-out because that that's why the stakes were so high and even the secretary girl was very pissed about it like what after all this you don't want to actually you know destroy Purgatory but since they did say that we will have inter-promotional fights I guess it's okay after all I do want to see more of Roland and from the Falcon guy because he was super funny. Despite all of Nogi's influence, Hayami is still a very present threat, his fighter did win the battle at this tournament, and it seems he has maybe links to the worm, who knows, so maybe he's some sort of final boss type character, obviously not in the fighting side, but in the scheming side. Also, Retsudo seems to want the king in association for himself eventually, that seems to be his end goal, which I'm going to be completely honest, I don't remember if this is a new plot point or something that was introduced before, seeing as he's more of a tertiary character, but that's cool nonetheless to know that, you know, he still has his eye on the prize, just like his father. In one of the final pages, Koga says that he will catch up to Alma in one year, which is funny to me, I laughed at that, that's supposed to be a joke, right? The problem with introducing a new character at this point in the game is you either make him a complete prodigy and you really speed up his growth to where he catches up to the main characters pretty quickly, which is pretty unrealistic, or you make his growth at the same pace of the other characters, in which case he will always be behind so he's not very interesting because he's a weakling in a fighting manga. I'm guessing they will go in the speed up route, but I still think that it's pretty bad if he catches up to Alma, one of the strongest characters in the series in one year. After all, all of the fighters are shown to be 
most of them actually below Oma's level and they have been training for years. So either Koga is like this unbelievable prodigy or I don't know. I, I'm guessing it would take more time, but I'm curious to see where the series takes it. On a personal side note, overall, I really enjoyed this tournament, even though there was perhaps one too many disqualifications and draws, I was expecting a clean tournament and then to get interrupted near the end, for example, such as the Shunin exam in Naruto, where, you know, in this case, the worm would invade or something in the tournament would get interrupted right in the final fight or in the final two fights or whatever. But I really do appreciate that they ran the tournament in its entirety and gave it a clear conclusion and not some type of muddy draw. I really like the fights, some more than others, obviously, and I expect to see more from the Purgatory characters, especially Rolon and the Falcon. I was disappointed though that they did not give more backstory onto Okubo's suit. I actually very much like Okubo, he's one of my favorite characters and I was very curious to see why he was dressed as a clown and apparently it was just to give some sort of snarky joke at the beginning of his fight, which okay, I, I don't think that was even like translated properly, it, I didn't find it particularly funny. But uh, yeah, I'm guessing that he just dressed like a clown because he felt like it, that's, that's my man Okubo for you.